Are you yearning to wake up each morning and ignite a new meaning and purpose in life and beyond? Welcome, everyone. I'm Michael McGinnis, an award-winning author, speaker, and educator on human potential, and your host on You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Life presents us with challenges that serve as catalysts for growth. The pivotal question is, how do we respond to these challenges, or better yet, opportunities? Do we adopt a victim mindset or rise to become victors? Our goal here is to guide and inspire you to master the most amazing journey you have your life you can do it starts now hey everybody michael mcginnis here with you can do it today the you in this case is really going to be a deviation for what we've been working on in terms of the whole structure of of becoming your full potential, but it really still applies because the you is a direct audience that our guest Heather and myself really have a great passion for. Uh, and that is as we get older, you know, the changes that come about and the opportunity there is for growth and development. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, some ideas, but in effect, the series is it's not about getting older. I'm going to put a B in front of that and say it's really about getting bolder and really learning the things that there are to help us along the way, you know, in what turns out to be a third of what our life is, right, of our lifespan typically for those. So without uh, further ado, let me introduce Heather Orencia. Uh, she's going to introduce herself, tell you a little bit about her work. Then we're going to get immersed into the conversation, you know, about what got us so focused on becoming older and being older and particularly helping those that are getting older. Heather, without further ado, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I'm excited to be here. So a little about me, you know, I really love helping people that, you know, are in this stage of life where we're finding that, you know, we don't have as much energy and we're not as flexible. And, you know, we want to be able to still be vibrant as we age and get into retirement, but maybe aren't sure what all that entails, right? So as a healthy aging and longevity coach, I really like to support people in this transitional phase of life right? through just those, you know, uh, what do I want to call it? The uh, personalized programs to really fit where they are. What are they going through? What have they, where have they been? And uh, what does their life look like as they're going forward? And whether that's, you know, their nutrition and fitness, or more importantly, their mindset, and being able to look at those opportunities going forward. Uh, Heather, really a bl blessing having you. And everybody, I just met really and talked with Heather not long ago. And this is where we realized that we really both have this passion. And we are both entering into this phase and realize the kind of changes and opportunities there are for growth that's there. So I had to tell me a little bit more about your story, feelings, sentiments that sort of got you to where you are today. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it, it really happened decades ago. I was in my early 20s and my grandfather um, had a, a fatal heart attack. It was his third heart attack um, and unfortunately it was fatal. The kick for me, though, was he had just retired. So as somebody in my early 20s, you know, I'm looking at where am I going to go to school? What am I going to do for my career? Not even thinking about retirement yet. And I had that experience where my grandfather, who had built so much and couldn't wait to retire, never got to enjoy it. And so that really made me start thinking like, wow what, what do you like, how you can't anticipate that obviously, but how could somebody change the way that they think about that? Meaning instead of looking at life, like, I just can't wait to retire. How do you start thinking about what am I going to do when I retire? What are my opportunities? What do I want that to look like? Some of my other experiences, and I've seen the gamut of, you know, my um, 
I've had uh, family members that keep working instead of retiring because they don't know what what their life looks like after that retirement, right? They've their identity has been so wrapped up in either, you know, maybe raising a family or maybe supporting the family or in their job, their career, like, you know, maybe they were a factory worker or an engineer. And then they're like, now, now what am I? You know, I'm just this retiree and what do I do with my life? So these are the things that I watched people, you know, in my life go through. And I'm like, wow, you know, to your point, we're not talking about this. We're not talking about it in our 30s and 40s when we should be thinking about what does that last third of my life look like and how can I start doing things today to make sure that stuff happens. I had a mentor say to me one time, um, something along if, what sticks in my mind is, do today the way that you wanna continue. Meaning, if you want to be active when you're older, why are you not active today? If you want to be able to, you know, travel and be able to walk several miles a day, multiple days in a row, can you do that today? And are you, are you doing it so that you can continue doing that in that, you know, last third part of your life? So just lots of, lots of, um, Things have gone through my mind over these decades after experiencing my grandfather's passing at such an early, early age for me and also in my mind now um, that I'm not much younger than he was when he passed away. <laughs> you know, so that's pretty impactful at this point in life. But then watching other family members just have their identity, identity so stuck in what they were doing um, that they they don't they feel like they've lost purpose. They don't know how to find it. Wow. Uh, Heather, thank you for your willingness mm -hmm. to share that too. And it is this profound elements like your grandfather mm -hmm. passing, you know, uh, that really uh, what make this so impactful and, and why this discussion is so important. And you're right. We really don't talk much about that, you know, and I find that true now as, as I work with others today, uh, is, is that we all just sort of have this perception of retirement and it's influenced by billboards and our talks with financial advisors. And really, that's about the only conversation, golf and, and do we have enough money? But there's all of these other elements that go along with it. And you're right. It really does suggest that we really start planning for this phase before we come to a other. Otherwise, we hit that wall. And really, that was my own case, my own experience. Uh, you know, I was uh, sort of pushed into this phase. You know, I worked for a great company. Uh, they hit the wall and I had to lay off. And so as a result, they were very gracious and offered an early retirement package. And it was going to impact those who were 60 and older. I was 61. I knew I had to take the package, right? Better to have a package than no package at all. And came out thinking that, oh, this was just a segue to another job. Then all of a sudden, I was out there searching for a job. And why wasn't anything happening? And all my colleagues were saying the same thing, only yeah. to discover how ageism plays a significant part in our life as we get older. And that's a topic in and of itself because it's not only ageism related to job, but it's ageism in our culture and sort of our perceptions of the older population. And all of a sudden create that stigma and other things that we have to really to deal with. Well, and that's where, as I'm showing here, you know, the chart that I've used with respect to growth and the research that I conducted, what's really interesting about this is, is that after all the work that we've done to really become our potential in the working years, now we hit this new stage in life. And what I found, which I found now true of so many others, is it's like, you know, I was able to go through and work through the process of the personal growth stage. And the self-discovery, who am I, who do I want to be, and what really does full potential mean to me, enlightenment, you know, what really is this life about, I decide to really to pursue that quest. And now I come into this retirement, and I find myself all the way back at square one again. You know, now just beginning to start, think about, you know, oh my God, my identity, as you said, was gone. 
it was revolved around the family and now empty nest comes along big swipe up the head right early mm -hmm. retirement done and I can't get another job but another big swipe up the head right and I'm standing there dazed and dazzled and starting to think about what the heck is going on and beside myself and as a result, it's that process of beginning to go through that personal growth phase. And then self-discovery again is, is that that let's take from what we were, but realizing that pieces of it, such as our identity and work and things like that may be changing. Um, so who are we again? And, mm -hmm. and who do we want to be in this phase of our life? And I think enlightenment is really profound and powerful because it really does confront, we begin to confront our mortality. You know, is because others around us, we realize, start dying and we are closer to that finish line. And that's a profound thought. So that's, you know, my own story as it relates to what you said. And you're right. You come to this point. Wow. It's a huge impact. So what are some of the things that you think about uh, working and helping with others? Yeah. You know, I, I think the first thing is starting to look at that phase. I think we, in, in our culture and society, it's that, you know, you graduate from high school and then you, you go to college or university and you, know, you get a job and you grow in that job. And even if you move around, right, you're, you're continually on this growth path. And all while you're in those stages, it's always thinking about that next phase, next phase. And again, going back to that retirement piece and you hit on it, like you, you're like, do I have enough money to retire? You know, I spend all these years saving, saving, saving. But while you've maybe done some uh, unconscious visualization of what those other pieces of your life were going to look like and how you pivoted amongst them, have you really thought about when you do retire or you take like, maybe you're going to do a semi-retirement or a soft retirement what does that look like? And I would bet most people aren't really thinking about that. You know, beyond that, well, maybe we'll vacation, maybe we'll travel, or I would like to, but we're not doing a full picture view of, of what that's going to look like. So I think that's the first thing that can really help in that planning piece. And I'm not talking about doing that like when we're in our 50s, like that should be happening when we're in our 30s or early 40s, when we're still so wrapped up in maybe raising kids, getting kids off to college, maybe we're caring for our parents. I think we don't have time to think about that stuff, but it's really, really important that that becomes part of our, um, part of our growing older, right? Wow. I, again, it, it's, there are so many topics, isn't there, you know, that really yeah. go along with what we're saying. We're just at a starting point. And that's why everybody, you know, stay tuned. We're going to stay along with this for a while, because I think it's a, it's a profound opportunity to really to begin to provide some of that education. We're going to point out some other great people who have some great information to share as well along the way uh, there too. And I think that, you know, you really hit on these some really key points um, here is is that uh, what you can do for me you know what I found here is is that that our perception of what retirement is is as I mentioned before influenced by what society tells us or whatever and it's all grand and everything else and you don't realize until you get there especially when you start seeing your own family members and other people that you know hitting these walls you realize oh my god yeah there, there really are challenges along the way like any other phase of life mm -hmm. but the essence of it for me and as i'm all about becoming your full potential and and so when i hit this wall as i mentioned i went back you know i hit those wall i got depressed and i was right back sort of at square one you know my life trying to figure things out but what I do is what I've done is, is I was bound to determine, say, is, is that this can't be a finish line right here, right? Yeah. I got more time and people are living longer today. So what does me, what is becoming your full potential mean as an older person for sake of calling it that? And even now I get, I, I get really sensitive to, to the wording we use because mm -hmm. even using the word older, 
has all this baggage perception around it to not only ourselves, but to others. In our society, unfortunately, you know, people sort of want, hey, us the older people get out of our way. We're in a fast lane, you know. But again, it's it's older, but at least we can change our vocabulary and start thinking about it as, as you said, it's just another phase of our life, more chapters mm -hmm. in our book. What do I want it to be? Yes, there are changes, right? Just like there are changes coming out of the early stages of being an adolescent and into adulthood, right? And new responsibility, whatever. Well, there's new things here in dynamics. And so things that we want to be aware of, and once now being aware of it, then we can then we can begin to take charge. And everybody, this right here, this podcast is an example of my own transformation. You know, I hit that wall, you know, I was depressed, I really couldn't figure things out. And then I stopped myself and I said, no, this is not a time to give up. And I challenged myself to apply my own structure to this process mm -hmm. and did. And out of that came a rebirth, right? Of what do I love to do? What would I really do? And that's that personal growth. It's the self-discovery. It's the enlightenment. It's about being the full potential. Okay, well, guess what? What a prime opportunity to apply it myself again and then be able to share some thoughts and ideas to help others. And that's what I've been doing for these last few years. And what an honor to work with others. And the constant comment that I get is, is I'm so glad we had this conversation. I never thought about this, right? And there are all of these elements here. And that's where I look forward to having a conversation because we're just scratching the surface. But if in essence, if I was to say this a starting point, is is that it is a new phase. It's a new chapter in our lives. It's a third of our life. So let's make the most of it. And it all begins right up here, mental, mm -hmm. right? And you got to think it that way because if you're thinking, oh, it's going to get old, or we're going to do this way, and you keep having that self-talk, guess what? You become older. And that's right. It's mind over matter. And it's this core principles that you really want to come to understand. And then we're going to have a lot of other pieces sort of supporting us because, oh, they're older and they're feeling older. And, you know, and then it starts to build this sort of group philosophy and mindset that guides us instead of really saying, no, you know what? I'm going to make the most out of this. And you know what? How life will happen will happen to me, but I've got a lot to do, a lot to give. And I'm going to, you know, rebirth myself in this phase which is what I've been doing. And so I'm excited to be able to, to be a person. In this. So I'm not just somebody talking about this stuff that we both here have, are living through this and have had the wake up calls to really to push us into this uncomfort zone and talk more about it. Thoughts, Heather? Yeah, no, I, you know, I'm on that same page as you, Michael. It's, you know, I don't know if it's a fear of talking about it. You know, like you said that, that enlightenment of facing our own mortality. Like if we're thinking about, gosh, you know, I don't know how much longer I have, so I'm just going to take it easy. And then you do that for the next 30 years. <laughs> like what kind of, you know, will you look back? I think that's one of the things that has come up for me multiple times in probably the last decade of my life is I ask myself, well, I regret not doing this when I'm 80 or 90. Am I going to look back and say, gosh, you know, I wish I would have gone for that coaching certification. Why didn't I do that? What was I so afraid of? You know, I, I don't want to look back and say, boy, I, I'm glad that, um, or I do want to look back and say, I'm glad I took care of my health because that allowed me to do the things that I wanted to do you know, when I got older you know, to stay active and to travel and, and to experience nature in the way that I like to experience it. So yeah, as you said earlier, so many different, so many different things to talk about in this space and getting it in front of more people and getting them thinking about it, I think is really that key. And I really like what you said uh, earlier too, is about how we really need the conversation earlier, because I know as I approach that topic, uh, with the people that I'm involved with and coaching, um, they haven't. And if I, I, I do a little bit of life coaching, I, I always suggest it up front and give people a basic framework for that. We can talk mm -hmm. about it. One of the sessions, you know, it begins by just putting a, a 
a line on the left hand sheet of a paper from the bottom left to the upper uh, upper left and that zero is when we were born and up on the top I told you, you got to put a number and that's going to be how old when you die you know and of course we don't know that but you can anticipate you can put an idea maybe based on family whatever and right off the bat people struggle because it's a confronting your mortality and you're right mm -hmm. i think we don't talk about it in part because it is this next line we're closer to this thing called mortality and there's no escaping it it's there uh but what i've learned about it is there's a lot that we can do to learn about that you know and to really to change our perceptions and attitudes about that as i have mm -hmm. and again it's gonna it, it would be blowing probably people's minds to talk about but i've spent a lot of time in the enlightenment phase to really to understand life and that's the things that i suggest that we do but in essence it is and i think another part is is that we get stuck our identity i, I mean for me you know whenever i went someplace think about how we introduce ourselves right so what do you do right what do you do first question we're asked and oh i had a I, I, this great i had a talent management Bose corporate you know all of these things here that was just wow cool you know yeah. what what a great title and other kind of things and that's how our society is we look mm -hmm. at identity you know about who we are is a lot about our identity and then all of a sudden afterwards so what do you do i was i, I like i wanted to shrivel up in a ball because i didn't know what to say i was so embarrassed you know, I, I, I don't know, I'd be tired. I'm doing a part-time job, you know, and it's sort of watching people sort of, okay, next, you know, go talk to somebody else, right? And it was just like, oh man, but these are all of these elements, you know, that we really start confronting um, about it. And we'll be again talking about some fantastic resources to help educate uh, you as this, as well as just having the conversation. All right, head on the head, this is, we don't, we don't, we go into this because again, this is we want to promote in our society, the material financial aspect, because those are big parts of our society in particular. You go um, other cultures and you find there's a much greater reverence towards older people. Uh, and there's also, you know, more, more focus on it. It's less about the money, more about the quality of life. And these are all things, again, min millions of topics to really to consider. What other thoughts cross your mind? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's coming up for me is, uh, you know, I'm I'm an ex engineer and I love like numbers and statistics and stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, there you go. Who are you? I'm an ex engineer. Um, but uh, you know, I was like, what was coming up for me as I was reading somewhere that ageism, you know, ageism is actually more prevalent than racism. And what what really jumped out at me was. We hear about racism a lot, but how often do we hear about ageism? I think it was even surprising to me that it was so prevalent back in my 40s and even you know, as I approached 50, in my mind I thought, you know, I'm gonna go do this coaching thing and if it doesn't work out, I'll just go back to work. And as I was networking with other women my age, <laughs> And they were telling me the challenges they were having of finding a job. I was like, it's a real thing. And it still exists because it existed years ago when I was a hiring manager. And I mean, this was like decades ago. But it's still prevalent and more prevalent than racism. I was like, oh, my gosh. This, you know, not so much that um, we can break that apart, but it's really coming back to that. How do we help people work through that and find their next phase of life, their next purpose, that thing that just, they wake up in the morning, they're excited to tackle their day versus just hanging out until they reach that top number on that page. Yeah. Right. Yes. Wow. I, I really thank you for bringing that up too, because it, these are the real things that are a part of the conversation, right? Is mm -hmm. and it's where the feeling is is sort of pushed aside. Why is loneliness epidemic amongst the older people, mm -hmm. right? Because we get pushed aside over to the sidelines, yeah. and you know, and, and in this fast-paced world, again, you know, I was there, and right? I, I was confronting myself early, you know, early on, because I was so angry at first that that this 
was the case that I myself was was getting a bias against myself when I still had so much to offer. And I see that all of the time in individuals yeah. that uh, somebody's letting a number, you know, overshadow what our really potential can be. But it is what it is. And, you know, when you confront these things, you learn, hey, to do what's in my control. I can't control how others are going to be. But what's in my control is how I respond to this. And that's what I did. And so I started to, to research. I mean, as we talk about jobs and everything, too. I, yep. So I hit the wall. Corporate America, for the most part, didn't want me back. Right? Old. Goodbye. You know, don't want you. Not needed here. Uh, and so but then I found other routes. And there are many routes today. The gig economy exists, which opens up so many doors to contractual part-time uh, mm -hmm. work, you know, and that's what I'm doing today. I have our portfolio career of different things that I do that I love, you know, and those will be the things that we'll be able to talk about for individuals because the real secret to me and what I've discovered is, is that this phase that we tend to label retirement uh, the the healthiest aspect that I've so far read in adopting myself is that of what's called the active retirement, you know, and I don't even like the word retirement. It was built, you know, many, many decades ago, you know, people, you know, retired at 55 and they died in their 60s, right? And so that was the reality. And so, of course, it was about doing nothing, but not today. You don't want to be doing nothing. You got so much more to give. Plus, has the benefit of helping you to live longer and healthier, along with the other aspects you were talking about. So we're at the end of the, the show here, we know we're coming back, but any closing thoughts for you, Heather, as we close this introduction to this conversation about getting bolder? Mm, yeah, you know, I think, you know, just to, to wrap it up, it's, it's yeah, how, how do you want to show up in that last third of your life? And really starting to think about and visualize picturing what it's going to look like and don't worry you can pivot but laying laying out a at least the initial plan um, really kind of sets the stage for um, making sure that you are fulfilled in that piece of your life excellent great way mm -hmm. and i know i'll come back and we'll be talking about many tools as a great individual, Dr. Riley Moynes, who's done some of the most extensive research on this topic. You know, I, I love his line. It says, at the end of the day, what he's about, and he is now gone from, you know, his role in work now to helping others, right? And, and, and that's what he says, is that how do people, uh, how are people able to squeeze all the juice out of what's left of their life? their retirement. What a great way to put that. I love that. You know, and and one of the key learnings is is that because they learn to help others with the gifts that they have. They just have to find different ways to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And that's a way of which, you know what? I'm going to finish strong. So ladies and gentlemen, great having Heather. You hear conversation's going to continue. What a great opportunity to sort of venture into this conversation. It really is the perfect connection to the idea of becoming your full potential because this is an opportunity to really to grow and develop it. It's not a time to just push it aside, to think of it as just being about decline and, you know, and just maybe trying to get a few more trip slips or just a bucket list. It can be way more than that, but it all starts here with the mind and education and awareness. So tune in as we'll come back and we'll be talking about this topic a lot more. Heather, thank you so much for your time here today. And we look yeah, forward to having more conversations. I'm Michael McGinnis, and you've been listening to You Can Do It, inspiring growth, igniting potential. Tune in every second and fourth Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Transformation Talk Radio. As a recognized educator, author, and speaker on human potential, let's learn together how to make the most out of this life and to put a ding in your universe. This is the incredible journey of personal and spiritual growth, self-discovery, and enlightenment. For more information, visit growhumanpotential.com.